Hello folks and welcome to another edition of the Satori Traders Market Pulse Update. Let's jump right in. This is what we're going to cover this weekend. We're going to talk about the inflation adjusted prices of silver and gold. We're going to look at the charts obviously. We've got some mining stocks to look at and then I want to make sure that I talk about the uh, backlog of assays. That's affecting all of the miners right now. This is the CPI inflation calculator. It's provided by the BLS, one of the branches of our government. And so if we take the price of silver in January of 1980, which is approximately $50, and then we adjust that for inflation in the subsequent years. So now we're in October of 2021 and we, we calculate and the BLS tells us that the current price of silver adjusted for inflation should be $177. Well, I was out buying physical silver yesterday. It cost me just a little bit over $30 an ounce. I paid uh, spot plus 482 on uh, 10 ounce bars yesterday. And so this is using the inflation rate that the BLS acknowledges. John Williams at shadowstats.com, he calculates, well, he keeps track of, of two measures of inflation. In one of his indexes, he uses the same formulas that the BLS used in 1980. And then Mr. Williams has a second index using the uh, BLS formulations from 1990. And so he tracks inflation using both of those measurements. Using his 1980s measurement set, the inflation adjusted price of silver currently is about $580 an ounce. And so if we want to look at the premiums in the precious metals and silver in particular, you know, I hear people saying, oh, I don't want to pay, you know, those kind of premiums. I'll wait for the price to come down. In my mind, the real price of silver is whatever it costs you to walk out the, the door of your local coin shop that day with the shiny stuff in your hand. Whatever that price is, that's the real cost of silver. Yesterday in San Diego, that price was a little bit over $30 an ounce for 10 ounce bars. So, and the point there, one of the points there is that we're going to look at the charts and see that, you know, the spot price of silver is 25 or whatever. And a $5 premium is historically quite high. You might even say outrageous. And historically, those elevated premiums tend to come down after four or five months. And so it makes sense from that perspective to not pay an elevated premium for silver. Wait a few months, premium's going to come down. Well, premiums in silver have physical silver. Again, what it costs you to put the shiny stuff in your hands. Premiums have been elevated for nine months now, and not only are they not going down, they're, they're continuing to rise. And, and one of the reasons that I go out and I visit the local coin shops here in San Diego is to get a gauge, a read on what is availability and what are premiums doing. And like I said, <laughs> availability is not great and uh, premiums are rising. Here's the same trick in using the BLS CPI uh, inflation calculator, $800 gold in 1980, inflation adjusted. We should be looking at $2,800 gold today. Obviously we're not, it's a thousand, more than a thousand dollars. No, a thousand dollars below that. And then I forget the exact number using John Williams, 1980s calculation methods, I think. God, it was $17,000, something just crazy for the real inflation adjusted price in gold. Okay, we're on to the charts now. And so this is the gold in the monthly time frame. Obviously, the pattern I'm watching here is this developing head and shoulders. I did adjust this chart a little bit this week. What we have been looking at, I think the last time we looked at this chart, it probably looked like that, where both shoulders were pretty much even. This week, I did make that adjustment. I'm assuming that price is still finishing out this shoulder in preparation for doing this, which is, you know, the using the conservative 
methodology for measuring head and shoulders target 2685. I've seen other analysts that use this is a more aggressive way to find a target is you double this range and put it at the breakout point. And so that gives you a target more. Here it's uh, 2840. I've seen that as high as almost 3000 depending on who's doing, you know, where you draw these lines is kind of arbitrary. Let's see, let's keep moving here in the weekly time frame. Obviously, we've got a very strong move happening. Energy is elevated. MACD, we're just coming up out of bear zone. We've almost got both indicator lines up above zero, which will be bull bull mode, which suggests the primary trend is then upwards. And again, very strong move last week, closed on its high, just nice action there uh, in gold in the weekly time frame. Here in the daily, same thing, just a real powerful move, impulsive move. Uh, price has pushed up into resistance. We can see that there's some prior support resistance action at this current level. We're running into, this is the first extension of the mod shift pitchfork here in uh, pink. And so two layers of resistance there, but uh, just some real nice action. In MACD, we've still got some room to run before we get to this potentially an overbought level that stopped the, the rally before. So we've got a ways to run on based on MACD. Clearly energy is elevated, gold's looking good, D did good stuff last week. Now I wanna update this chart real time. So last time we looked at this, I had been looking at this consolidation pattern. Again, we're in a monthly time frame, So these, each of these bars represents a full month. Been looking at this consolidation pattern as having kind of a slanted bottom that would give us a, a, a flag there. And then we got this failure, and, and so I didn't really want to redraw it yet. I think for simplicity, I'm going to start looking at this as a rectangular banner or flag. It's still the same pattern. It, this is a consolidation pattern that is typically marks the halfway point of a price movement. And so in Silver's case, we have this very impulsive price movement. It was five months long, big move there. This is a consolidation. Our target is 40 bucks or so. Daily, t our weekly time frame in Silver, we've got a recent a crossover buy signal in MACD. Energy is elevated. Nice, powerful movement up off of this bottom. You know, obviously we've had multiple bottoms at this level. What is that? In 2170, we'll call it. So nice action. Obviously testing resistance now at the 40-week moving average. But notice that price closed. Let's see, where was the close? 25.30 and the high was at 25.38. So closed eight pennies off of the high of the week, which, you know, that's just real bullish action when price closes near the high of the uh, time bar. Here in the daily time frame for silver, again, just real nice action. And it struck my eye that this is a, a pretty obvious, I gotta apologize, it's kind of a messy chart. Let me get some of these, some of these lines. Anyway, obvious head and shoulders pattern, which gives us a target at I think that's like 2820, somewhere in there. And again, just real nice, strong breakout above that neck level. And yeah, again, pushing into resistance at the uh, moving average there. So nice action in silver. It's really refreshing to see. This is obviously, this is the mining stocks in the monthly time frame. And this is, I'm not sure whether to call this the horse pattern or the dog pattern. Obviously, I was feeling silly this morning. I drew this, this channel. That was the first thing I noticed when I was updating this chart was uh, that channel action. And what I really wanted to see was uh, whether price had broken above that channel yet. And obviously, it hasn't. And then the next thing I saw was this... Uh, horse or dog pattern and uh, obviously you can see why I'm an engineer and not an artist. 
So back to the price action. This volume action is, is actually bullish. What we see is that when price was rising strongly here, volume was rising along with it. And now we've been in this consolidation, this downward consolidation, and volume has been steadily declining. And that's exactly the behavior pattern that we want to see in an upward movement. And, and so again, that suggests that the primary trend in the mining stocks is upward, although we don't have a solid breakout yet here. Here are the mining stocks in the weekly time frame. I'd been using this as my proxy for the mining stock sector. And, you know, my bullish bias had been thinking that this right here was a double bottom and this was a breakout towards new highs. Clearly that's not what has happened. Now we're back down at this support resistance zone. We've got a strong bounce from that level. Notice that MACD reached a very oversold. You can see where we've reached this oversold level a couple of times in the past, and now we're getting a strong rise off of that level. Energy is clearly elevated, so Daily time frame, GDXJ, again, the uh, head and shoulders pattern struck my eye in this vehicle. It's a little bit slanted in this case, and we get a price target at 54.22, thereabouts. And again, real nice breakout there last week. Let's zoom in. That's so pretty. Let's, let's zoom in on that. And so we can, we can see that this is, you know, gappy, gappy, gappy. These are like runaway gaps. That's a, a very impulsive price movement, strong price movement. Look at that price bar right there with price closing right at its high. That's a, another indication of, of elevated energy. So anyway, just a nice action there in the mining stocks. Oh, and one of my, one of my thoughts as I was looking at charts this week and, and this morning, the fact that the ETFs are moving so strongly suggests to me that this is institutional money. You know, it's a combination, obviously, of retail investors and institutional investors. But to see the broad sector move like this, I'm assuming that this is institutions moving in in a non-trivial manner. So, and as we'll see in a little bit, the fact that the, the metals were getting this kind of action with the dollar being so strong is uh, remarkable. And uh, speaking of which, here we are on the weekly time frame for the dollar. And we can see, you know, there's what the dollar did last week. And so to have the, you know, have the precious metals uh, move so strongly last week, so robustly, is really remarkable and suggests that there may be things going on in the background that aren't aren't necessarily visible. One of those being perhaps the Evergrande bond defaults, debt defaults going on, not, o not only in China, but globally, because non-Chinese firms are exposed to Evergrande debt as well. And actually there are two more Chinese real estate developers that have defaulted, failed to make payments on debt in the last two weeks. One of them is Kaiser Group or Kaiser Holdings, and then the other is, I believe, Modern Land is the, the name. So that's three different Chinese real estate developers in trouble so are struggling anyway uh u.s dollar in the weekly time frame obviously is very strong you know but had an extended move running into potentially resistance at the median line of this andrews pitchfork and notice as well that d is pushing up into what could be a resistance level, an overbought level, and an indication that the price has reached a level of overboughtness where it needs to rest. And let's acknowledge MACD is not a bounded indicator. MACD can go to infinity plus or minus. But typically there tends to be a bounded behavior from previous highs and lows. So. That's just something I keep an eye on when I'm looking at charts. 
let's go to the daily time frame again just real strong action in the dollar last week rich and i've said this before richard russell always talked about the possibility for a synthetic short in the u.s dollar that because every basically everything on planet earth is priced in the u.s dollar as traders and investors scramble to unwind their leveraged positions, potentially over leveraged positions, in many cases, they have to first acquire U.S. dollars before they can liquidate their position because everything's denominated in the U.S. dollar. And so anyway, Richard surmised that we might see unexpected strength in the U.S. dollar, even as the economy was collapsing. Let's continue into the interest rates. This is the weekly time frame. And again, you know, interest rates showing a trend towards rising, which of course, that's not a good thing. At the current levels of debt globally, governments can't afford the overhead weight of increasing debt costs. We can't afford to manage higher debt load than we already are. So anyway, seeing, seeing rates rising persistently is not a good thing. Here in the daily time frame, we can see, you know, clearly this is strong movement. Perhaps it's just counter trend rally. You know, obviously we had rates dropping. This could just be a counter trend rally before they turn around and continue lower. We will see. All right, there's the basic charts. Let's get to the mining charts. There's SK Mining Corp. We're looking at this is over the counter, ESKYF, daily time frame. SK hasn't been doing much of anything interesting for a while here, basically all of 2021. You know, this is just a sideways trading range bumping up and down there, but appears that we have a strong breakout in progress look at that volume you know it's doing this all all of 2021 and and now last week we just got this volume activity the accumulation distribution indicator has remained elevated for you know a year and a half or so turning back up now clearly investors interested in this stock again i believe this activity is based on they finally got some drill results last week they got five results out of 93 holes drilled in their uh, current drill season and and that gets me to the point of assay results are backlogged all of the labs you know, whether it's due to COVID or a new secular bull market in the precious metals, that, that's one of the things going on, in my opinion, which causes increased demand at the laboratories. Anyway, whatever the cause is, the result that all of the miners are suffering from right now is they can't get any assay, assay results. They got all these drill holes, but they can't, they don't know what those holes are drilling at and and this is unique in in history as i understand it and so this activity in sk last week is based on five drill holes out of 93 that they've got backlogged and the point i guess the point for us as investors when we're thinking about this uh, backlog of assays and how do we manage that is understanding that you know, SK, you go, go look at their corporate presentation, do your research on this, do, do your due diligence on this company. You may like what you see. This is investor reaction to the results from just five drill holes. And there are another, I think it's 88 drill holes. <laughs> that we are still waiting on results from. So anyway, SK Mining is one you might want to put on your radar to look at. Irving Resources, obviously not doing anything exciting lately in the price activity. I still like this one. I think that investors in Irving will ultimately be happy. And we can see, let's see, this is the weekly time frame. We can see volume building and then a nice surge last week in volume. We can see looking at the accumulation distribution indicator that investors have remained invested in. Earth. And this is a tightly held company. And it's also a unique company in that they are focused almost exclusively on Japan. 
and there aren't a lot of miners that are allowed to drill for resources in Japan. So anyway, Irving's another one to have on your radar at 90 cents a share. You know, that's a darn good price in my opinion, you know, all, albeit the, nothing really exciting in their price action. They have a unique business model. They are mining what is used as flux in the industrial smelters when they smelt the base metals, you know, copper, lead, etc. They need a flux to feed with the ore that they're smelting. And so Irving gets paid for their ore as flux <laughs> to the smelter and then receives a credit back for a quite high, I think it's, oh yeah, there it is. There's the number, uh, 90%. They get almost 90% credit back from the smelter for the silver and gold that's present in the ore that they provided. <laughs> it's, a, it's a neat business model. Dolly Varden, they've got a high grade silver deposit in a safe jurisdiction. They're in the Golden Triangle, British Columbia. You know, this is another one price action is not very exciting. It's just under 50 cents. Looks like some basing action potentially going on right now. They're surrounded. If you go look at their map, they're surrounded by Hecla. Anyway, they're just in a nice, nice spot. Ultimately, they'll probably be bought out by Hecla and likely at a price quite higher than uh, 47 cents. And then, of course, yeah, that's the over the counter. So that's uh, US 47 cents right now. Newfound Gold, so they got their NYSE listing this year, 2021, and that was going well for them. They were tracking along in this kind of this upward sloping channel. And then some, some assay results came out. And what happened is that a different assaying method was used. And the second methodology came in with a significantly lower grade. So one of the challenges in the mineralization, the mineral deposit that Newfound is currently exploring is it's nuggety. And so it can be challenging to get a, an accurate grade or rating from an assay of nuggety material. Novo's having the same issue there in Western Australia. They're dealing with nuggety gold and, and having a real, it's even worse for Novo. It's hard to assay nuggety gold. And so anyway, this, what we see in this price action week prior, and then again last week, this is investors reacting to the new assay result, albeit or, the results are still darn good, regardless of which assay methodology you want to look at, the results are still darn good. They're finding mineralization in essentially every hole that they have drilled. They've got 14 drills turning. They've yet again have doubled their drill program. They, they were currently planning uh, 200,000 meters of drilling in their current program, and they're fully funded for that. They've doubled it recently, so they're currently working on a 400,000 meter drill program and have 14 drills turning uh, on the property. Newfound is aggressively developing this property, you know, it's going to be likely in production quite rapidly, might be surprisingly rapidly. The mineralization is shallow, meaning it lends itself to open pit mining. This property, it's, it's in Newfoundland, which is a mining friendly district where open pit mining is possible. And so anyway, don't rule out newfound gold as a possible investment. In fact, if you like buying things on sale, <laughs> hint, hint, you might take the current opportunity to look at newfound gold if you're not aware of that company already. This is SK in the Canadian markets and in the weekly time frame. Yeah, so we looked at daily in over the counter. This is weekly in the Canadian markets. And a couple of things here. I just love, well, I, there's several things here actually going on. Look at that price bar for last week. That's a raucous price movement backed up by strong volume. <laughs> you know, big price movement, big volume. And then look at that accumulation distribution indicator, folks. 
investors are buying this stock and they aren't letting it go. The smart ones anyway, aren't letting it go. We've got this crossover buy signal in the MACD. It's happening from an oversold, very oversold level and both indicator lines above zero, which says that we're in bull mode in MACD, which suggests the primary trend is upwards. Uh, that's just nice, nice action there in MACD. Energy is coming up out of the tank level and rising. Anyway, just nice stuff in SK, let's see. And then Scorpio Gold, this is a definitely a penny stock. We're at uh, 12 cents. This is over counter, so that's 12 US cents. And just some real nice action here. Look at that volume. Look at the, the gappy action there up over. Clearly, that's a breakout above this level. That price bar. Oh, and we're in the weekly time frame, so even better. This is definitely an impulsive price movement going on here in uh, this is Scorpio Gold SRCRF. Nice action in the accumulation distribution indicator, crossover buy signal in MACD, energy elevated. And folks, I've ran long, but I haven't blathered at you in a while. So hopefully you'll forgive me for going long this morning. I've enjoyed chatting with you. See you next time.